Hello and welcome to Ms. Ma's Grade 11 Functions class. This is 8.3, Compound Interest. We're going to be talking about present value. Uh, now, the difference between future value and present value, you're probably wondering. Actually, you're probably not wondering because it seems pretty obvious. Future value is how much it's worth in the future, so that's after the investment is completed and um, or matured, I guess is what we would say. Present value is before the investment has started. And in this case, when we're doing compound interest, it's actually going to be referred to the principal and uh, this is actually an important distinction for when we do annuities which is an 8.4 and 8.5 but for now just remember it's after and before and that's fine so compound interest we originally used this formula right here a is equal to p times 1 plus i to the n and uh, that was our original compound interest formula if we're trying to s find principal we can isolate it so we just divide by 1 plus i to the n and uh, if it's in the bottom then of course it is actually an exponent of negative n so the new formula is p equals a times 1 plus i to the negative n that's our new formula right here and you don't really need to memorize it since it's derived so easily from the original compound interest formula, but it's just something to keep in mind if you wanted to know. So uh, we're going to use that for this question. Example A, determine the present value of Joshua's parents' investment if it must be worth $15,000 10 years from now at 6% per annum compounded annually. It's compounded annually, which means that we can just let I equal the... Um, per annum rate, which is 0 0.06, uh, n will be the number of years, which is 10, and a is equal to 15,000, because that's how much we want it to be worth in the future. So p is equal to a times 1 plus i to the negative n. Of course, we should be writing the formula out, and uh, we will just write this in here, 1.06 to the negative 10. You type it into your calculator and you should get $8,375.92. So Joshua's parents should invest $8,375.92. There we go. Okay, we're just going to do two more examples. You can see these are pretty straightforward. Uh, Winnie wants to start a business and needs to borrow some money. Her bank will charge her 6.4% per annum compounded quarterly. So again, it's really important to figure out when it is compounded or how often it is compounded. That's a really important detail. She wants to repay the loan in five years, but doesn't want the amount she pays back to be, a, to be more than $20,000. So it's the maximum that she can borrow and how much interest will she pay if she doesn't pay anything back until the end of five years. So basically n is going to be equal to five times four. She's not paying anything back so it's not a complicated question. Um, it's just that we know that she wants to have the amount be $20,000 maximum and uh, her interest rate is going to be 0 0.064 divided by 4 because of that quarterly business. So again, we just write our formula, p equals a times 1 plus i to the negative n, and fill it in, 20,000, 1 plus 0 0.064 divided by 4. You don't have to find the value if you don't want, just type into your calculator, to the negative 20, and you type into your calculator, and I get, um, $14,559.81. Um, so that's how much she can borrow. And it also asks us how much interest she'll pay. Uh, just like before, um, A is equal to the principal plus the amount of interest that we have to pay. So we can just fill it into this formula. Uh, 20000 is equal to 14559.81 plus i, you just subtract them off and you get i is equal to approximately $5,440.19. At least that's what my calculator tells me. So there we go. And we should write a concluding statement. So Winnie can borrow $14,559.81 and will pay Five four four zero point one nine in interest, and there we go. All right, 
Last question. Daniel is investing $5,000 that he would like to grow to at least $50,000 when he retires in 40 years. What annual interest rate compounded monthly does he need? Round your answer to two decimal places. Okay, so basically P is equal to 5,000, A is equal to 50,000, N is equal to 40 times 12 because we're compounding monthly. So uh, we want to find I. Now we could use either of the formulas. A equals P times 1 plus I to the N, or we could use P equals A times 1 plus I to the negative N. It really doesn't matter because we have both P and A. So we could use either one. I'm just more comfortable with A equals P times 1 plus I to the N. So I'm going to use that one, but it's totally up to you what you want to do. Um, feel free to use either formula. So this is 1 plus I to the 480. And we divide, so this equals 10. So 10 times 1 plus I to the 480. And as usual, if we are um, trying to get rid of an exponent, we're going to 480th root it. So this is 10 to the 1 over 480 equals 1 plus I. So I ends up being approximately uh, 0.0048. Um, of course, this isn't the per annum rate, this is the monthly rate, so we need to do the rate uh, as i times 12. Oops, 12, that's supposed to be 12, okay. And so if we do that, we get approximately 5.8% per annum. So that is our answer. So uh, he needs 5.8% per annum, period, the end. All right, so just in summary, uh, we just basically took this original formula for compound interest, rearranged it to find the principal instead of the final amount, and that is it. I hope you enjoyed it, and ask me any questions you have in class. See you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.